Basic Japanese for People as Lazy as Me, Episode 4, using Wo, the combinations of stuff, the Ten Ten, and the Little Circle. I guess Maru. So I forgot to talk about, in the last video where I said that we were done with the Hiragana, I forgot to talk about one thing, because it technically isn't used in any other words. This is technically in the W file. Um, remember how we have like the A, E, U, A, and O, and in W I said that there was only wa, right? Technically, there is a wo, but in Japanese it's pronounced o. Uh, it is not used in any other words, it is the particle that you use in Japanese grammar to denote a direct object. Yeah, so um, this one also shows up a lot, and that's why I forgot that it wasn't there because I was trying to do stuff that you'd write words with. But wo is written like this. First, line here. Next, it looks kind of like chi, but instead of doing all the way around, you stop like halfway, right? So let's look at this again this way. We've got first one. Second one. Third stroke goes an opposite hook for O. So this is saying something like uh, if you want to say, eat the apple, the subject of the sense, of course, is you. It's the implied you. And then the verb is eat, and then the direct object to which the verb refers is the apple. So you would say, anata wa. You, Ringo wo, the apple, tabete kudasai. Please eat. So in this case, yeah, there's that o or wo, depending on how you want to say it, I guess. So written quickly, it looks like this. Right. So let's move on. Okay, let's talk combinations. Um, so we've got things like. He, chi, she, di, he, ni, and me. Notice that all of these end in e. Basically, all of the the rows. The only ones, of course, are are you know the y row which doesn't have one that ends in e, and the w row which also doesn't have one that ends in e. But uh, we've got these ones, and then over here we've got written ya, yu, and yo. You can combine all of these things to make your extra syllables. So, for instance, you've got ki and ya. When you put a ki and then a small ya next to it, like that, like half size, you get kya. Kya. Like, jam that together. Ki ya. Ki ya. Ki ya. Kya. 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 And there's that. Ki and you would be the same way. Q and kyo. Kya, Q, Kyo. Next would be Chi, which following the same logic becomes Cha, Chu, and Cho. Shi would become Sha, Shu, and Sho. D is a little bit more difficult to pronounce because everyone, you know, the D and the R and the L and everyone screws that up. But this one will be Ya, Ya. This one is You. Anyone who plays Street Fighter knows a character with this in his name. Uh, you just have to add an extra U on the end of it. Why would you do that? We'll talk about that in a second. And finally, finally, he and yo makes yo. He does the same thing. Hya. Hyu. Hyo. Ni does the same thing. Why did you write a key there, Vincent? Nya. New, new. Anyone who uh, anyone who's ever watched any anime ever knows that this is the cat sound. Nya, like that. Last one is me. Me becomes mia, 
mu, I guess there really isn't like a loop there. And mu. Easy things here, right? Good stuff. Okay. So I've written down a couple of these. Uh, let's read them really quick just for fun. We've got ka, ki, ku, ke, ko, sa, shi, su, se, so, ha, ki, ku, he, ko, ta, chi, su, te, to. What do all of these have in common? Let's look at just the top row. Ka, sa, ha, and ta. They're written ka, sa, ha, and ta. All of these first consonants do not have a voice in them. You can say them all while you're, like, whispering. K, s, ha, t. No voice in those. But remember, you've got the other ones like, you know, na. Na has that N sound, which is voiced. Or what about da? Da has that R, D sound which is voiced. This next thing only works with the unvoiced consonant things. So let's take a look at it, right? Astute observers will realize that we have no D sounds, no Z sounds, no B sounds, and like no J sounds. Yeah. So, uh, given those, how do we make those sounds? Because we know that those sounds do exist. Because you've got, like, all kinds of words that use all of these letters. Uh, for instance, Kiki's Delivery Service, the black hat is named GG, which is a J sound, but we don't know how to write that yet. So let's, let's take a look at that. Each of the unvoiced consonants can have what is called ten-ten. Ten ten, written on top of it. It's a sort of like sideways diagonal kind of equals sign, right? When you put a ten ten onto an unvoiced consonant uh, character, it makes that consonant voiced. So take the K sound for instance. <coughs> say the K sound, but use your voice when you say it. <coughs> gut, gut, gut makes a G sound, doesn't it? The K sounds become G sounds when you put ten ten on them. So ka would become ga. Ki would be gi. Ku is gu. K is ge. And ko is go. Ga, gi, gu, ge, go. Sounds like baby talk, doesn't it? So we've got the G group. The next bit over here is going to be the sort of S group. This one is special because of she. She is a little bit mm, weird. But everything else is relatively okay. So we've got sa, the S sound. Take the S sound and use it with your voice. S -z -z. It's the Z sound, right? These ones become Z. So sa becomes za. We'll come back to she. Su becomes zu. Se becomes ze, and so becomes zo. You would think, given all this other information, that she would become zi. But they don't have that sound in Japanese. They have it in Chinese, but not in Japanese anymore. She becomes ji, with a j. So this is how we would write gigi from earlier. So, so this one is sa, which is za. This one would be g. Za, g, zu, ze, zo. Complicated and arbitrary, I know, but that's how it works. So this one is the z with the j group. Next up, let's look at ha. Ha is hard to say with a, a like, voice to it. But uh, let's like make let's make it so that you have to force it to have a voice. 
ha, ha just becomes ha, doesn't it? So we've got to have some sort of like corollary to it. So how do we make it have a voice? Ha, 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 ba, ba. I don't know why they make it a B sound, but they do. It's the B's. So ha is ba. He is B. Who is boo. He is be. And ho is bo. Ba, B, boo, be, bo. This is the B group. And finally, let's look at the T group. The T sound. Say it with your voice. Or say it first and then with the voice. T, t, d, d. This is the D group. So ta becomes da. Chi will come back to. Tsu will come back to. Te becomes de. And to becomes do. Chi is special because it almost never gets ten ten on it. Because when you take chi and put a, a voice in it, the ch becomes j, which is what we've already got over here. So these are generally used, like if it's a j sound, it's generally this one. Very, very rarely will you get this one with ten ten on it. Anyone who's watched Azumanga Daio enough has, what, has uh, seen the episode where Osaka remarks that if you put ten ten on chi, it becomes ji, which is the word for hemorrhoids. So ta, ji. Next is tsu. Tsu is, is weird, because if you put like the the voice to the t sound, you get z, which is like a d z kind of thing. Zu, zu. But when you write it, it just sort of becomes this z sound. So this is zu, da, g, zu, de do. Complicated and arbitrary again. I know, but that's how it works. So. I will point at them and then you read them, and I'll read them a second after, right? Ga, gi, gu, ge, go, za, ji, zu, ze, zo, ba, bi, bu, be. Bo, da, g, zu, de, do. So now you know about this ten ten thing. But earlier I also did this to a thing. Let's take a look at that. All right. So where the little ya yu and yo can only work with the like the the chi and the shi. And the e, and the ten ten can only work with something that has a voiced consonant on it. The little circle, whose name I don't actually remember, we're going to call it the circle, uh, has a significantly easier rule. It works with all of the h's. If anyone who watches One Piece will know that there's that character named Chopper, which in Japanese is pronounced Choppa. So we know chi. And we know how to make it cho now, by adding little yo. And we know how to make that extra little half a second, like, pause by adding a little tsu. But how do we say pa? Pa. Well, we haven't got that one yet. Let's take a look. If you put this little circle on any of the H's, it turns the H into a P. This one is the breathized H. So ha becomes... That's not a six. Pa becomes pa. He becomes p. Who becomes poo. He becomes pe. And ho becomes po. So now we know how to say pa. Choppa. Technically, his name is Choppa, with like a longer vowel on the end of it, but that only happens in katakana. I will show you how that works when we get to that video. So now we have learned all about the little ya, the little you, 
but little yo, we've learned about ten tens, we've learned about the circle. So that's all of the complicated things that are really going to be around. Uh, I guess next video is going to be all about reading practice, writing practice, and seeing if you guys can uh, uh, parse all of the stuff that's, that is going to be in like words written in hiragana, and then we'll move to katsukana. See you next time. Alright, so let's wrap this whole thing up. First, we already know. Ki, shi, chi, hi, and he twice. We'll talk about that in a second. And we know how to do the combinations with ya, and with you, and with yo. And we know what happens when we put ten ten on all of these. And what, we, what happens when we put the little circle on that one, the madu. But did you know that we can also do a double combination, where we've got the ten ten and the small yo yo yos? Gi, with that same sort of like logic, gi becomes ya. Gyu. And yo. G becomes ja. Ju. And jo. This one doesn't happen very often, but just in case it does somewhere, let's go ahead and go over it. That's uh, another ja, another ju, and another jo. B becomes bia, bu, and bio. And P becomes Pia, Pew, and Pio. Those things are pretty good there, right? So next let's talk about extending a vowel sound. Extending vowels is super easy. There's only two little, like, hang-ups for it. Anything that's got the a ah sound, ka, when you extend that vowel into the longer bit, you just put another a ah next to it. This doesn't happen very often, but it will happen. Ah. So this one is, instead of just ka, it's ka. For instance, and I, I just gave these as like random examples. They work with literally every single one that's got a vowel sound on it, so all of them. So this would be ka, or da, or, uh, you know, sha, or gya, any of those would also work. She, any of the e's, well, let's just do this. Any of the e's, you just put another e next to it. She becomes she. Any of the oo's, you just put an extra oo next to it. Do becomes do. Te uh, the, the E sound and the O sound are the only ones that are slightly different. Because while you write it one way, you pronounce it just slightly different. For the E's, the eh, as it were, instead of adding an eh to it, that's not technically correct. You add an E. So it looks like it should be read tei, tei, but it's actually read te. It's like the elongation of it. And the O is the other one. The O sometimes will have an O next to it. Sometimes. But the likelihood is that it will have an U instead. Mo. It looks like it should be mo, mo, but it's actually just mo. So, that's all of the combinations for this one. Good job. So that's the end of the, like, basically learning how to write this junk. I'm in the staff room right now, go figure. Um, let's work the next one on, like, reading, writing, speaking, listening practice. Okay, here we go. See you guys next time. Bye.